Hi guys. So this, uh, the purpose of this video is to share with you uh, the process of planning a PBL in business. As you see, it's an example of a business PBL. Uh, the way I look at it, it's really fun and simple and easy to do if you plan it right. I would divide the planning process into two steps. One, planning my standards, you know, and my big ideas, essential questions, and my assessments. I'll go through details. And then planning the project itself. Let's take it step by step. So had I been in the classroom, I would, you know, my plan was to cover human resources unit. I'm using a business example because I was a business teacher. So human resources unit was my plan for term four. If I look at the standards, there are 21 standards. I obviously cannot go into a classroom and meet for 85 minute blocks and get the students to work independently and in partners and groups and give teacher discussions and lectures and so on uh, to cover the 21 uh, uh, standards. So now I want to be smart. I want to focus on the priority standards, the power standards, which are the enduring standards, what enduring values and what main topics do I want my students to walk away with. I uh, need to spend time on highlighting the main priority standards, power standards. Everything else becomes a supporting standards that is learned along the way as I cover my power standards. So after spending some time, I managed to highlight seven of the 21 standards, seven main standards that I want my project to focus on. To simplify it, I'm going to use three key words with you. We're all familiar with them. Leadership, motivation, and organizational culture. We're all employees for AIS West, so we know we understand what leadership is, we understand what employee motivation is, and what organizational culture means. Okay, And this is what I want to teach my students. I want them to learn that by looking at different organizations, these three keywords really build up an organizational culture. So remember those three keywords as we continue on. So step one, I've identified my power standards. What do I want my students to walk away with? I found them to be seven standards. If you decide to share your project uh, standards with the students, there's no point listing all 21 standards. Maybe you just want to list seven standards. Maybe say something like, uh, by completing this project, you will uh, learn the following concepts and just list those seven standards to simplify it uh, for your students. I'm just listing everything here uh, to explain to you. Okay, so step one done. I've chosen my power standards and remember those three keywords I will use later. Step two, it's planning for my own self. This is planning for myself. What are the big ideas that I want my students to walk away with? I've come up with two big ideas that I will share with my students. I, you know, so organizational culture consists of many elements such as leadership, motivation, and dealing with employees. That's a big idea. Another big idea is the fact that organizational culture plays a role in employee productivity, motivation, and success. Two big ideas that I want my students to know. I will throw two essential questions out to my students to keep them thinking. I want them to think critically as they complete this project. So to what extent does organizational culture play a role in the success of the business? I want them to get to think about it. And is there an ideal organizational culture? You know, if you read about different organizations, they all have different ways of leadership. They have different ways of motivating employees and different cultures. Is there an ideal one? Keep thinking about that as a student, okay? I'm planning the essential skills that I want to uh, instill in my students. I want them to demonstrate basic understanding. I want them to analyze some pros and cons of organizational cultures. I want them to be able to research. And I want them to, you know, uh, have some evaluative skills. So these are the skills I've identified for myself. I then need to start thinking of my assessments. I'm using green for formative assessments and red for summative assessments. And when you select your formative and summative assessment, the sky is the limit. I'm only choosing a few because these are applicable to my unit. 
you can obviously add so many different uh, examples of formative assessment. For me, I'm going to have them read some chapters, some short chapters, and submit notes that they have read the chapters. I'm going to have them research an organization of their choice and submit a summary. And for me, that's a way of checking on their understanding. It's a checkpoint for me. I'm going to prepare a worksheet on leadership. Remember, this is one of my keywords that I'm covering. So I'm going to prepare a worksheet of questions and answers. And that's a formative assessment for me to assess that the students are on track. I'm going to have them create a PowerPoint. You know, they're very good with technology. They will love doing a PowerPoint. And maybe have an interview. Interview a, um, a manager through Skype or interview a family member through Zoom. That would be fun. I will check on their understanding through those. Obviously, your formatives can include other forms of assessments, such as reflections, uh, summaries, or... Uh, small mini products, create a short video, uh, role play with your brother or sister. So these are all forms of formative assessments. I will plan of my summative assessment. How am I going to check that they have really understood the concepts? I'm going to give an online quiz and I'm going to schedule face-to-face check-in sessions maybe to discuss progress. And that for me is a summative grade because I'm checking on the final learning of my student. Because I'm giving this PBL project, I will not be giving a lot of online uh, sessions. So maybe I can schedule face-to-face, -face, you know, just short five to ten minutes with each student and check on progress. And then, of course, I have to think of my final product, which is the end product of this journey, which becomes my uh, final exam. This is the alternative to my final exam. Okay, so step one plan my power standards. Step two, plan my big picture and my assessments before I start planning my project. Step two is to give instructions to my students. I'm going to start planning my project itself and write some instructions. Of course, I'm typing very quickly, so you, you can always add detailed instructions as you plan your own project. So I'm going to tell them you're going to choose an organization of your choice. This is going to be authentic, this is going to be fun, because a student can go to Apple, Google, any shop, you know, shop owned by the family, a bank, a multinational, or just any company that you choose. Using that organization, you're going to complete a series of tasks. So now everyone is completing his or her own authentic tasks that I will list below. I'm going to be available during our regular online class time to answer your questions. And then points four and five are very important because I do, I do, uh, it's not just giving the, you know, the PBL instructions and go finish it on your own, but I have to guide the process. I will be uploading videos that I will create by myself or I will find videos on YouTube to upload. I can create some PowerPoints. Maybe I can find more resources and I will upload them as my students complete this project. And the most important thing I have to also plan is the rubric. So every task will be accompanied with a rubric for completion. Remember, everything is done independently and the students have to understand what is expected of each task, okay? You can go ahead and list as many instructions related to your Google Classroom, related to submission of work, deadlines, and so on, that's on you. I will then start listing tasks. So the first task I'm going to assign, I, I'm going to choose five short chapters, like two or three pages each. I'm going to direct them to take notes. They will make a list of any questions they want to ask me because this is part of my guidance. I will ask them to submit their notes on Google Classroom and I'm going to give a deadline. Remember, those notes are when one of my formative checkpoints. So this is the first one. Once they do this, this is one of the checkpoints. And then I'm going to ask them to find an organization of their choice and to write a summary. But remember, I will add a rubric because they don't know what a good summary is. So I'm going to really give a rubric about what a good summary looks like. They're going to apply the theoretical notes that they took to that organization that they are now researching. 
this becomes my second checkpoint. My third checkpoint is about leadership. Remember, this was one of my priority standards, one of the keywords. I'm going to guide them with a video. I'm going to uh, then have them uh, uh, answer a worksheet. Again, I will add a rubric and a deadline, and they need to submit this worksheet after watching the video. My next priority standard is about motivation theories. So I'm going to spend time working on this. Maybe I will give an article. Maybe they will watch a number of videos, one that I will put up explaining the concept, or maybe attend an online session that I will explain those theories. Uh, through, or maybe put a series of videos from YouTube about different motivation theories and how different organizations motivate their employees. Again, that should be fun, and the students can complete them at their own pace. But how am I going to check their understanding of motivation? Maybe create a PowerPoint, give instructions on what each slide should include, give a rubric, and create a deadline for this PowerPoint to be submitted. Again, I'm highlighting this in green because it is one of my formative checkpoints here. Okay? And then I'll move on to my next uh, power standard, which is organizational culture. This is when I'm going to have them interview any manager and maybe submit a summary of the interview or maybe record it. Record your interview with the manager and submit it to me. I'll watch it, give you feedback, and so on. Again, I will give a rubric, and this is one of my formatives. After guiding my students through the various tasks, giving enough instructions, giving guidance, giving feedback, then I'm ready to give maybe an online quiz, which becomes my summative, here highlighted in red. So this is my first summative. My other summative will be to schedule the face-to-face -face session that I discussed earlier, just to understand. Maybe this is the time when I give ownership and responsibility to my students. Hi, Mohammed, this session is for me to answer your questions. Do you have any questions? No, mister, I don't have any questions. Okay, can I ask you some questions? The purpose of this session is to check on your understanding. I could see that you have completed all the previous tasks. You've done a great job on this. Let me give you some, you know, I just want to check that you have understood and completed those tasks okay so the purpose of planning the instruction is to chunk my project into small mini uh, tasks give feedback give a guiding rubric and support them with articles videos and guidance along the way once I'm done with my PBL this is the final product which becomes my semester exam alternative this becomes my E2 uh, grade. I want to give an authentic uh, tiny product. Remember, the students are completing a project in every subject. So we need to be flexible, we need to be gentle and simple. So I'm going to give a scenario. This is where I want to write up my scenario. You are the manager of the organization that you chose. And here is a scenario you're facing. And I'm going to write up and make up a scenario. The employees are so unhappy. They are demotivated. The COVID and the closure of uh, the organization is making them work from home. They are not happy. I need to come up with a plan. So you are the manager, come up with a plan to motivate the employees, you using your own leadership style and what you plan to do to improve the culture. And then I'm going to give them choices, just throw a PowerPoint out, make a video, give a speech to your employees, something like, dear employees, we're all going through uh, closure, we're working from home, I feel your demotivation, you know, and show your leadership style through that speech. How are you motivating them to hang in there? Maybe uh, a student that doesn't want to put a video together or to uh, video himself, write your plan in writing. Maybe that's a shy student. Or role play with your family members. G gather with your family members and role play that this is an organization. But remember, add a rubric because this is how I'm going to assess you. Okay? I hope this helps you if you choose uh, to take this challenge and to plan PBL. Uh, I love PBL. PBL is very engaging. The students take responsibility of their own learning. And through PBL, you can always go back and just hit on your priority standards and make it really authentic. Uh, if you have any questions, we are more than happy to uh, uh, help you and to answer the questions that you have.